Now we can also talk about the temporal contrast sensitivity function. What I've shown you so far is the spatial contrast sensitivity function. We measured the contrast threshold for different spatial frequencies. But you can actually also present luminance that's varying as a sinusoidal function of time. And that's what you can use to get the temporal contrast sensitivity function. So do you remember I had the slide earlier where I showed you spatial frequency uh, luminance gratings increasing left to right in spatial frequency. Here is the same thing increasing left to right in temporal frequency. So on the left here we have something that's not changing at all, that's zero temporal frequency. Here we've got something which is changing from dark to light and back to dark but quite slowly. And over here we've got something that's going rapidly from dark to light and dark to light quite fast. So in exactly the same way, you can ask people to discriminate when they can see the flicker versus the steady illumination. And you get curves like this. So this is again presented at different uh, illuminances. So the black curves are for the highest luminance. Um, and you can see that it peaks at around 20 hertz. So hertz is a cycle per second. You could say cycles per second, but it's just, I guess, traditional to talk about hertz. Uh, and then again, just as we had the acuity limit for space, now we've got what's called critical flicker fusion, so the highest temporal frequencies that you can see. And actually the limit's not dissimilar, you can see that it's probably around 60 or 70 hertz that we can extrapolate these curves down to. Again, that's highest for high luminances, and as you reduce the luminance, your contrast sensitivity drops overall, but especially at the higher temporal frequencies. And that's interesting, that's because your visual system is trying to make the most of the available light. So it's integrating over longer periods of time in order to catch all the light it can, if you like, um, but at the cost of losing some of your sensitivity to rapid changes. This is also very dependent on where you are in the retina. Where, but there's a big difference, whereas um, in the context of the spatial contrast sensitivity function, I told you that you can't see such high spatial frequencies in the periphery as you can in the fovea. In the temporal domain, it's actually the other way around. You can actually see higher temporal frequencies in the visual periphery, uh, where your rods are, and where you tend to be more sensitive to rapid change. And this is something I think that we probably all experienced. I don't know if you've ever had the situation where there's an annoying flickering fluorescent light, maybe the bulbs going or something, and as you try and work, the light above your head is flickering really irritatingly, but when you look directly at it, it appears steady. That's because in your fovea, you're less sensitive to flicker than you are in the periphery of your visual field. Now, I don't know how many of you remember these old-style cathode ray tube um, displays for televisions and computer monitors. Absolutely vast, really heavy, much less convenient than today's flat screens. The way that technology worked was the screen was actually black most of the time and just very briefly illuminated. So this is uh, an oscilloscope trace showing the light recorded from the CRT. So this is luminance as a function of time. And you can see it just goes blip, 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 blip. For that reason, CRTs had to operate really fast. Um, usually they would have a refresh rate of 85 frames per second, 85 hertz, because otherwise they would visibly flicker and obviously that would be extremely off-putting. Today's LCD monitors are actually illuminated all the time. If you ask them to display a white screen, they will just display white all the time. So, that so there you go. That's the contrast sensitivity function. And I hope I've managed to convey to you what an incredibly succinct and powerful description of visual function it is.